It's time for another deep sky challenge. This is number three. It's not gonna be nearly as difficult as deep sky challenge number two, which was very faint and very difficult. And I don't think anyone watching saw it. At least no one told me they did. And I'm not surprised because it was very difficult. This is not gonna be nearly as difficult. It's something visible in an eight inch or larger telescope. So I'm gonna start out with Artemis, my 12 inch telescope. I don't have an 8-inch telescope, so I'll go to my 10-inch Dobsonian after that and try to see it. And after it gets dark, we'll try to see Deep Sky Challenge number 3, and I'll tell you about it. Hello and welcome to the program. Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. Tonight, we're going to try to look at Stefan's Quintet, a group of galaxies in Pegasus, one of the most studied galaxy groups ever. Stefan's Quintet was discovered in 1877 by Edouard Stefan at the Marseille Observatory using one of the first large reflector telescopes to use a glass primary mirror instead of polished speculum metal. Stefan was using a 31-inch reflector when he discovered this group of what he called Les Quatre Nebules, French for four nebulae, which is what he thought they were, but which turned out to be the first compact group of galaxies ever discovered. They were named in Stefan's honor, Stefan's Quintet. Quintet means five, but Stefan only described four nebulae, or what were actually galaxies. And the reason is that one of the four galaxies that he described, NGC 7318, was actually a close pair of galaxies. NGC 7318A is an elliptical galaxy, and 7318B is a distorted barred spiral galaxy. 7317 is an elliptical galaxy, 7319 distorted barred spiral galaxy with a gigantic black hole at its center, and two tidal tails, probably caused by close proximity to 7320, which is also a spiral galaxy, but it's well in the foreground, and it doesn't interact gravitationally with the other galaxies in Stefan's quintet. 7320 is the largest and brightest of the galaxies in the group, though. Stefan assigned each galaxy a number, 19 through 22, with 19 what would become NGC 7317, one of the elliptical galaxies. 7317 has a surface brightness of 13.8, but visual magnitude 13.6 is 0.4 by 0.4 arc minutes, and it's 314 million light years away. Number 20 is actually two galaxies. 7318A has a surface brightness of 13.1, but visual magnitude 13.4. It's 1.2 by one arc minute and 317 million light years away. 7318B has a visual magnitude of 13.1 and it's 1.6 by 1.1 arc minutes and it's 275 million light years away. 7319 has a visual magnitude of 13.1 and it's 1.4 by 1.1 arc minutes and it's 321 million light years away. 7320 has a visual magnitude of 12.6 and it's 2.2 by 1.1 arc minute and it's 37 million light years away. Well, that was a mouthful. <laughs> to find this group of galaxies, go to the four stars that make the great square of Pegasus and look for Beta Pegasi, also known as Shiat. From Beta, go five degrees north and west a little bit to Eta Pegasi, also known as Matar. And from Matar, go almost exactly four degrees north and just a tad west to find Stefan's Quintet. Don't get it confused with a nearby galaxy, the fantastic spiral galaxy NGC 7331, which is just one half degree north northeast of NGC 7320, which is quite a bit brighter than the faint galaxies in Stefan's Quintet. NGC 7331 is worth looking at, but at magnitude 9.4, it can be seen with a small telescope or binoculars. And as I mentioned, Stefan's Quintet requires an eight inch or larger telescope. 
but if you find a bright spiral galaxy, you're probably on NGC 7331, and then you can just drop down a half a degree to get on the group of Stefan's Quintet. Okay, this is Shiat or Beta. This is Matar or Ada. You're gonna go four degrees north and west a little bit, so we're right about there. I cannot remember if I've seen Stefan's Quintet before. I had all my astronomy notes stolen out of my car this year, but I know I took a very bad photo of it with a 102 millimeter refractor, which is too small. I just don't remember if I looked at it, but I'd imagine that I did since I love visual astronomy so much, but I just can't remember. So this may or may not be my first time, but let's go to Artemis and see if I can see it tonight. There are beautiful sketches, by the way, of Stefan's Quintet by Howard Banach and others in the September issue of Sky and Telescope magazine to give you an idea of what to look for. One of them is with an eight inch telescope. If I see Stefan's Quintet, I'll show you my sketch, but don't have high expectations. Also, if you own Interstellarum, it has fabulous sketches of every object, including Stefan's Quintet. Only four of the five galaxies are an actual group. 7320, the brightest, is not part of the group, but it has an active star forming area. The four that are physically associated will eventually merge with each other, and there's a filament of emission between the galaxies in the group, and space telescopes have revealed that this filament was caused by 7318b falling into the group at several million kilometers per hour, causing a shock wave in the intergalactic gas bigger than the Milky Way and heating some of the gas to millions of degrees, whereby they emit X-rays detectable by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. Okay, let's have a look now and see if we can find Stefan's Quintet in Artemis. I'm gonna turn this light off because these things are faint. I already looked at 7331, I've seen it before. It's a beautiful galaxy, um, but much, much easier to see at magnitude 9.4. I'll be back in just a second with the red light. Wonderful. Okay, I can see Stefan's Quintet with my 12 inch telescope. It looks hazy and faint. Um, I'll try to increase the magnification, but I don't think it's going to help, but there's always that urge to make it bigger. So I'm going to put a nine millimeter in there and see what that does. Okay, as suspected, that did not help. So I went back to, I think, 86 times magnification. And I think I can make a sketch. It's pretty faint. It, 7331 was much brighter, as I said. Uh, but I can see Stefan's Quintet, so I think I can make a sketch of it. Now I'm going to go over to my Dobsonian, though, first and see if I can see it uh, before conditions deteriorate because I see some clouds moving in. So let's go over to the 10 inch telescope and see if I can see Stefan's Quintet. Okay, with the Dobsonian, it was quite a bit harder to find. <laughs> I think the easiest thing to do is to still follow my directions to go to beta and then to eta and then go north, a little bit west. But uh, since it's so faint, just overshoot a little bit and try to find 7331 because that's pretty easy to see and then drop down a half a degree. And I was able to see it in this 10 inch Dobsonian. It's faint, and I'm using a 24 millimeter eyepiece, so that gives me 50 times magnification, so I'm not as magnified. And this is pretty faint. I mean, they're, they're you know, around 13 magnitude, so they're pretty faint, but I can see it. Uh, but I'm gonna sketch it by going back to Artemis, <laughs> because 
it's really faint in here and it won't look like much. So I'm going to make a sketch from my 12 inch telescope. So I'm going to go back over there and do that without any of these lights. And then I'll show you what I came up with. When I saw Stefan's quintet, woohoo, with the 12 inch and 10 inch. I didn't try with 8 inch, but allegedly you can see it with an 8 inch telescope. But the thing is, with galaxies, you have to go to a dark sky site and go on a moonless night and a night of good transparency. That's the key for galaxies, especially this one. It's very faint. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening for stargazing. It's crystal clear. The Milky Way is splashed all the way across the sky. It's beautiful. The transparency, I'd say, is five out of seven. And so I'm out here again with Artemis, my 12-inch telescope, because I wasn't happy with my first sketch, which was on white paper of Stefan's quintet. So I'm looking at it again. Conditions are much better tonight. And so I'm trying to sketch it this time on black paper with chalk and a white pen. And I think it looks much better. <laughs> I can clearly see 7320, the brightest of the galaxies in Stefan's Quintet and the one that's not interacting with the others. But um, one of them I'm not sure about. I definitely see four of them. So I'll show you my sketch after I finish it. And I don't know if I'll show you this white one or not. <laughs> but let me get back to my sketch. Thank you, universe, for such a beautiful, beautiful evening. I wish you could see it. It's so gorgeous. I'm so lucky. Before going to Stefan's Quintet, I looked at Enif, the orange star in Pegasus. It's so pretty, way more orange than Arcturus. Very pretty, so definitely check it out. If you can't see Stefan's Quintet, you definitely should be able to see 7331. You do have to go to a dark sky place, though, because galaxies are hard. Um, but 7331, it's pretty easy. Uh, so try that and check out Enif and good luck with Stefan's Quintet. It's pretty cool. So I hope you get to see it too. Let me know whether you saw Stefan's Quintet. So that's it for now. I'll see you all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever, Sula signing off.